We've taken a drive down to the San Francisco Bay Area today to try and avoid some of the wildfire smoke and heat of the Central Valley. So we're going to take a ride on the San Francisco Bay Trail. We're starting at Point Isabel, and from here you can see San Francisco skyline over there, the Golden Gate Bridge, and Point Richmond out in the distance. Let's do it! The Point Isabel Trailhead parking area is located just down the street from the Costco and the Postal Mail bulk shipping facility on Central Avenue just off I-580 and I-80 in Richmond, California. We haven't been down to the Bay Trail for almost 10 years, so we figured it was time to travel back down here and soak up the distinctly nautical vibe of this beautiful trail. Today we're riding from Point Isabel down to the old Ford assembly plant in Point Richmond. It's about a 10 mile round trip, but this ride isn't about grinding out the miles. It's about taking your time and enjoying the amazing views of what has to be one of the most beautiful areas in the world. Point Isabel is also home to a very large dog park and there are loose dogs everywhere. Uniquely, dog owners are allowed to leave their pets off leash as long as they'll respond to voice command. I was a little concerned as dogs typically can't resist someone on a recumbent trike, but all the dogs we encountered were very friendly and ignored us for the most part. The large complex on the right is the Richmond U.S. Postal Service bulk mail sorting facility. So if you live in the Bay Area and you're tired of receiving junk mail, you can blame these folks. Point Isabel encompasses 23 acres and draws bird watchers, fishermen, and other nature lovers to its unique coastal marsh environment. I always thought it would be cool to live in one of these homes right along the trail adjacent to the bay, but alas, the price of Bay Area real estate combined with an ocean view currently puts one of these 1,700 square foot homes at just around $1.2 million.
The Richmond Marina Bay Yacht Harbor has 850 slips and can accommodate vessels up to 120 feet. I knew a fellow triker, Richard Arnold, whose dad lived on a boat in this marina. If you can manage to live on a 30-foot boat, the slip rent is a reasonable $300 per month plus an additional $250 per month for live aboard privileges. I can imagine this as being a pretty cool lifestyle, but I'm guessing I'd have a heck of a time finding room to store my bikes and trikes. Wait a second, it looks like there's plenty of bike and trike storage on this one. We're now approaching the Rosie the Riveter Memorial in Marina Bay Park. The memorial pays tribute to the remarkable women that made a critical contribution during World War II, taking on the manufacturing jobs left vacant by the men then fighting overseas. The last time I was here, I noticed an older woman carefully examining the memorial. After striking up a conversation, it turned out that she was actually one of the very women who had taken on a manufacturing job to aid the war effort during the Second World War, a genuine Rosie the Riveter. I promptly thanked her for her efforts during the war. She thought for a moment and said, thanks, in all these years, no one's ever thanked me for that. Here's the old Ford assembly plant on Point Richmond. Built during the Great Depression in 1930, the massive plant measures nearly 500,000 square feet. Designed by architect Albert Kahn, known for his daylight factory design, the plant features huge, seemingly endless walls of windows running its entire length on all sides. Originally one of Ford's largest plants on the West Coast, in 1935 it turned out 60,228 Ford automobiles and by 1936 it could produce 400 cars a day. I thought it was kind of interesting that in 1937 the workers went on strike looking for an increase in pay which at the time was $6 for an 8-hour day. 
During World War II, the plant was converted to wartime production, turning out military jeeps and constructing tanks. Again, most of this work was done by women, making an invaluable contribution to the war effort. The last Ford assembled here rolled off the line in 1953, with the plant being closed in 1956. The plant eventually fell into disrepair, but the city of Richmond, recognizing its historical value, restored the building and it's now part of the Rosie the Riveter State Park, with most of the square footage rented to local businesses and the main hall rented out for events. The Rosie the Riveter Visitor Center sits just next to the Ford plant and houses all manner of educational and interactive exhibits designed to spotlight the contribution of the women that kept the fighting forces going during World War II. The Richmond Ferry Terminal sports a 1930s Art Deco design, helping it to blend in with the rest of the park. Here, for the reasonable fee of $4.50, you can catch the ferry going into San Francisco. That's as far as we're going today, so it's time to turn around. The trail continues all the way out to Portola Point, but that's an adventure for another day. From Point Isabel, you could also take the trail towards Berkeley and ride over a section of the Oakland Bay Bridge. Yet another adventure for another day. We're coming to an area of the trail here with quite a few places to eat, including the Bubaloo Cafe for sandwiches and Asian fare, Lara's Fine Dining for Italian food and drinks in an upscale environment, and the An Restaurant for Vietnamese cuisine. Oh, if anyone's looking for something to get me for my birthday, I'll gladly take one of those.
Thanks for coming along on the ride, folks. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.